the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. As a mum, often I actually don't need your physical presence to do things, but I do need a sounding board. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. G'day, this is Dr. Justin Coulson, the uh, founder of happyfamilies.com.au and author of six books about how to raise a happy family here with my wife and co-host Kylie. Mrs. Happy Families, I'm feeling very manly today. Uh, I've gone and, re- well, I, I was going to say I've rescued a dead fish, but you can't, re- <laughs> you can't really rescue a dead fish, can you? We have a, we have a little fish what pond. What did you rescue it with, <laughs> I might ask? Well, you had to bring it to me. So we've got a little fish pond outside our house and um, we don't do a very good job of keeping our fish alive. I don't know why, because we feed them and there's lots of all the, you know, just the dirty, mossy stuff that's in there. Um, and, and I noticed that there was a fish floating and so I tried to get it out and I couldn't get it. So I called out to you and you brought out a, what do you call that thing? Like a strainer, like a colander kind of thing. Yeah, you got my kitchen strainer. <laughs> and I, um, I I got it out and I buried the fish and I'm feeling very manly for my, my hand. Buried the fish. Was there a <laughs> shovel included in this burial? Because oh. I don't believe the flick over the shoulder is considered a burial. <laughs> You're making me sound really bad. I, I, I threw it in the garden. It'll get buried in the garden. You're so- What's the matter? I'm glad that our kids aren't that attached to these fish. (laughs) Holy smokes. Well, anyway, that's um, that's just another day in the life of the... The Coulsons. Sharing the cognitive load we, right there. Yeah, well, well, that's what we're talking about today. But before we get to it, uh, we got a, um, a another five-star review come through. In fact, they've been coming through fairly frequently. Thank you so much, TBK Wills, who said, five stars, I'm playing catch-up from February. Of all your podcasts, I truly feel that I cannot miss one of them. There's too much good stuff in every episode. We love those five-star ratings and reviews so that other people can find out about the podcast. Wherever you listen, please leave a rating and review so that we can uh, make other families happy. So now we've got to try to help everybody to be happy with a a request that's come through. Podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au is how you contact us. What's the question, hun? The question was specifically to me and asking, how do I share the mental load as a mum with you? So there's an assumption in that question that you're carrying the cognitive load of our family. Is that what you're I believe saying? so. I believe so. Do you think that you are? I do think that I carry a very large percentage of the cognitive really? load. So, yes. So I, I think we should test this. Uh, but, but what I think is fascinating is that when researchers do studies on this topic and they look at the way – uh, the, the way, just the household division of labour. So this is not so much cognitive load as it is who's doing what in the home. What the data seems to be showing is that when men are asked what percentage of the housework they do, for example, they might say, I do 40%. And then their partners, th- this is always in a heterosexual in- uh, relationship, the partners will be asked, how much do you do? And they'll say 95%. And you'll notice that 40 plus 95 is more than 100%. I'm not going to do the maths. And and what the researchers have found for decades now is that somebody is exaggerating the extent to which they're participating in household labour and helping out around home and family. And um, there, there are some people who are suggesting that it may be the men. Well, I actually read an article that's been written by a Harvard PhD student right. in relation to this idea of the, the cognitive load. And she actually talked about the fact that um, there are three different areas where we carry this load. First of all, as mums and, and parents in general, we've got the emotional work. We're dealing with, you know, kind of helping our children with these big emotions that come through. Yep. We're also doing the admin work. And I would suggest that that's pretty much where most of our energy is spent. So that's, that's library day and sports day and swimming lessons. and Yeah, the running of the house. Whose you birthdays, know. when, and organising parties or taking kids places, that sort of thing. That's right. Yep. And then there's project work. So on top of all of the daily admin stuff that you need to just get through each day, then we've got birthday parties that we've got to plan and we've got to, you know, organise birthday presents for our extended family or, you mm. know, running the Christmas family dinner party or whatever. Making sure secret Santas are out uh, by late October. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. 
So there's a huge amount of energy that's required, mental energy, to just get through a single day as a family. So I'll confess, so there's a, there's a couple of things to highlight here. For those of you who are new to the podcast or don't know Kylie and I well, we I, I guess you'd say we're pretty traditional in the way we have our families set up. I'm the primary breadwinner. Uh, you look after the house and kids. And, and I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm like, okay, well, I reckon most dads that I know – certainly carry a fair bit of that emotional load, the, the, the cognitive load. If the kids are upset, sometimes mum's frazzled and, and, and they say, go talk to your father and dad sorts it out. You're looking at me like as if. No, no, seriously. No, I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening. And when it comes to the admin, I would say that in, in a traditional setup and even maybe in a less traditional setup, it's still going to be the mum who's going to take care of most of that admin stuff. I'm not quite sure how I would do if you were to... Um, I've got a few questions for you. Put you to the test. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll check that out in a sec. And when it comes to the project work, I reckon dads are, are not there. But dads are building stuff in the shed. I'm being, again, very stereotypical. Or they're mowing the lawn or they're doing all the outside work, all the big projects. I mean, there's just a lot to do in a family. And, and you have to split it somehow. I guess the question that you've been asked um, via this uh, podcast listener is, how do we do it? Or how, how, how can it be done? Did you say you were going to test me? Yeah. <laughs> Let's find out how I go. I reckon I'm going to go great. I'm confident. I think that I carry a lot of the cognitive load in this family, at All least right. at least 80%. Okay, 80%. <laughs> you, you Here may, we go. Maybe not. 50, what days 50. do the kids do swimming lessons? That depends. Um, we've got definitely, uh, I was going to say Friday, but it's not Friday anymore. It's just changed. We've changed swimming lesson days so many times. <laughs> this is not fair. A this whole is, term. This is not fair. Okay. Uh, what, hang, hang on. Hang, I've got to answer it. They do it on... Um, it, it's, it's music lessons on Tuesday. So somebody's got a somebody's got a swimming lesson on a Wednesday and then there's definitely uh, – sorry, a Monday and then there's a Wednesday. There's definitely two on Wednesday and then there's two on Friday as well. Did well, I, you might have got the days right, but I'm a little bit nervous about who's going to show up to swimming lessons <laughs> by the hey, – Hey, can I just say you sent me to swimming lessons with children a couple of weeks ago and I was there on time. In fact, I was there two hours early. That's how on time I was because you got the time wrong. So I just, I'm just putting it out there that I'm doing okay. What grade is baby number five in? She's in grade six. And what's her teacher's name? <laughs> I have no idea. How are we celebrating Miss Six's birthday this year? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Who cleans the toilets? Uh, that's a shared responsibility. I definitely do it sometimes. Uh, and we have other children who also have a responsibility to do it. Uh, and I'm going to guess that you do it more than anyone. Where are the cleaning products kept? We keep some cleaning products in various bathrooms. We also have some under the kitchen sink and we have some in the laundry. How often do the bed sheets get changed? Weekly. Oh, look, you're, you're making up for it now. What day do the bins go out, Dr. Oh, Chase I know this because anybody who's listened to the podcast over the last month knows that I've chased the bin truck down the street Thursday mornings twice this month, <laughs> running down the street with the bins behind me. What's for dinner tonight? Uh, tonight, um, <clears throat> Thursday night, it's Throwback Thursday, Uh and we have a we, we have a meal roster, and I'm sure that if I was to look at the roster, <laughs> I'd find out what you'll be cooking for us tonight. So I guess you also know whether or not we have the ingredients oh. we need for dinner tonight. <laughs> no, because I'm in the office and I'm working. But uh, have you made your point? I've made my point. I think I've done a very good job. But it works because we're in a partnership, <laughs> right? We've got a happy family. <laughs> Everything's okay. Yes? We're all good. Okay. We're all good, honey. What was the name of the person who asked this question? Deb Ann asked this question. Deb Ann, I'm never talking to you again. <laughs> <laughs> but we have numerous people that have responded as a result of her question who all want to know the same thing. All right, so what we're going to do is going to take a quick break and when we come back, let's talk about how we can manage the load and how we can share it. It's the Happy Families Podcast. Are screens creating tension at home? Tweens, Teens and Screens is a webinar to guide families to healthy, safe, super screen solutions. Buy it today at happyfamilies.com.au slash shop. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And today we are having lots of fun. With <laughs> you're, this- you're having fun, making me look bad. <laughs> with this idea of how to share the cognitive load. Mm. Should I ask you some questions about how I run my office, how I look after the staff, what, what it costs to you know r- run the business? I did have a question that I thought you, you might enjoy answering. Oh, did I cut you off before the end of all the questions? No. What was the I question? was just going to ask if there's enough fuel in the car. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> so so when was the last time you actually looked? I don't know. Seriously, the number of times that I get in the car and look at the fuel gauge and it's flashing, I'm like, how how many k's have you done on flash? And Kylie's like, I don't know, I don't know. I've just been driving. Justin's the only one that fills up the car. Carrying the, I'm carrying the cognitive load of the fuel. Um, how do we how do we manage the load? The que- the question that you were specifically asked by Deb Ann, who I'm still not talking to, was. How do we share it? How does it work for us? Okay, so what would you what would you say is uh, something that we do that really works well? So I've got a couple of things. You had your webinar on Monday night talking about parenting on the same page, and I think that that is paramount to us being able to share the cognitive load. Yeah, whether there's conflict or not, just just parenting requires us, and running a family requires us to be aligned and to be unified and and uh, what's the word to to correlate and coordinate things. Yeah, and as a mum. Often I actually don't need your physical presence to do things, but I do need a sounding board. I do need someone who's invested in what's going on in my world or our family's world to be able to kind of talk through the process. You know, if I'm trying to kind of navigate a Thursday afternoon and I've got four different things that I'm supposed to be doing, sometimes it's just great to have an extra person in the mix to go, you know what, if you do X, Y, and Z, it'll actually kind of streamline things a lot better. Or better yet, uh, I can see how busy you're going to be. What about if I try to be flexible on that afternoon so that the pressure is off you? Which is great for people who have that flexibility and not so great for other people. Not everybody can, yeah. yeah. (laughs) But yes, definitely. And I think understanding and recognising that each one of you carries your own load. Yeah. And, And it can be weighty and heavy for totally different reasons. I'm just laughing because I'm thinking we, we, we really do. I, I, I'd struggled to answer some of those questions, but that's because I'm carrying my own load. In, in our case, it's not that the man isn't carrying any load at all and mum's doing it all. I've got my own load and stuff to deal with and that's why we divide the labour up because we just can't carry it all. How, how parents do it as single parents, I, honestly, I, I think that it must be the hardest job in the world to – carry the emotional load, the administrative load, the project load. It's just extraordinary. But in, in our couple relationship, the other thing that really strikes me is every Sunday, you and I have a meeting. We send the kids off to their rooms. They can read, they can draw, they can colour in, they can do whatever it is that they want to do. And we have about a probably an hour long coordination meeting. And we answer three questions. Number one, let's have a look at the week just gone. What went well? Number two, what didn't go so well? And number three, what do you want to focus on this week. And just doing that helps us to get alignment. And it means that we're carrying the load together because we're looking at how things are working out, what needs to be improved and what we can do together to fix that. Yeah. And I think as we go through that process, there's a recognition that, okay, this is an area that I can step up in, Mm. or this is an area where I can step in. um, And it just makes such a difference. And so from there, being able to kind of go through the week and actually calendar each thing. So even though you may not physically be a part of my week, you're aware of what I'm trying to juggle and what I'm trying to do. And we go through your week. So even though I'm not in the office, I'm aware of what your time restraints are. And so I have a realistic expectation of what you're capable of jumping in and helping me with and what you're not. And, and, through that process, there's an ability for us to take one another's perspectives and recognise that we're each carrying these these loads and what we need to do to be compassionate and helpful with each other. Yeah, so the, the, the central thing that I think works best in this process is that as we go through that calendar, as we talk about what's going well, as we talk about what's not, and then we focus on what we're going to do better next week, there's a question that we really – try to enunciate as often as possible. And that is, okay, it looks busy for you on Thursday. How can I help? It looks like Saturday is going to be really tough. How can I help? And when we ask that question of one another, when I say to you, how can I help? You're still carrying the load because that's in your domain in terms of the way we've divided labor. That's in your domain. But when I say, how can I help? I'm reducing the load. It's kind of like the person in the gym. They're doing the bench press. They're carrying the load. But the person who spots them, when they can see that it's hard for them, they say, would you like some help? And they put a couple of fingers on that bar uh, under the bar and they just lift gently and they're taking a little bit of the load, which makes it doable for the person who's trying to do the bench press. And I think that's what we really want to do in our 
in our in our families. Now there was somebody who asked another question. Uh, she said, "I'm totally on board with this." conversation i need to be part of it what about ha- what happens when dad comes home and he's happy to help out with dinner bath bed with the children but not willing to carry any of the decision making load not willing to carry any of the administrative or project based load not not really even that involved with the emotion load what's the advice there i think this all comes down to perspective taking if your husband has an intense workload where, you know, he's got his own cognitive load, then you can understand why when he comes home, he just wants to <laughs> chill out. That doesn't mean that he actually gets permission he to gets do a free that. Pass. Yeah, I've got a heavy load at work. I'm not going to do anything. It's not how it works. But I think that as partners, if we can recognise that and actually empathise and sometimes sympathise with them in relation to how they're feeling, that we actually have a better chance of getting them on the same page. Yeah. And then you can have your Sunday meeting and say, what went well? You were really helpful. What didn't? I need you to help me with some of the decisions or some of the admin load or some of this or that. And then what can we do this week? Which is why Sundays actually works beautifully because for most of us, we're not Pressure's off. having you know so much pressure around what we're doing. And so it's a day where we kind of, we can just chill a little bit as we make these decisions. Well, this has been a great conversation. I hope, Deb Ann, that that has been helpful for you. Thanks so much for being in touch. Podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. That's podcasts with an S, podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. If you've got any questions for us to bounce around and try to be helpful with, we really hope that you've enjoyed what we've had to share. And if you have, we always ask for those ratings and reviews to help other people to find out about the podcast. Justin Rulon from Bridge Media is our producer and Craig Bruce is the executive producer of the Happy Families podcast. If you'd like more information, information about how to make your family happier, you can get it all at happyfamilies.com.au.